Congress and TikTok tensions heighten. The House set to vote on Wednesday in a decision that could lead to a U.S. ban of TikTok. Congress is targeting the video app amid concerns of the platform's roots in China and security risks to U.S. users. Joining us now is Republican Congressman John Molnar, who is a member of the China Select Committee. Good to have you here with us today, Representative. First and foremost here, I mean, we're hearing about a lot of TikTokers calling into offices. Is, is your office one of them? And, and what are you able to, to give to some of those users who are trying to, you know, lend their voice to this broader vote that's taking place? Well, sure. And, and yes, we are definitely hearing from users. And it's important to note that this legislation does not enact a ban on TikTok. In fact, that is something very clearly that uh, TikTok actually put out a push message with uh, inaccurate information, and now we're getting people uh, responding to that. So what this does is requires ByteDance, which is the CCP, uh, Chinese Communist Party affiliated company that is the owner of TikTok. It requires them to sell TikTok to some kind of a, another um, entity. So it can't be an entity that is a foreign entity of concern, whether it's Russia, China, uh, North Korea, Iran. It has to be someone who wouldn't uh, be considered a foreign adversary. And so what this does is gives them six months to sell, uh, or they can choose not to, but then they would uh, basically disqualify themselves from the U.S. market. Congressman, it's Johnny here. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Former President uh, Donald Trump yesterday voicing his opposition to a possible ban. I'm curious just how, what you're hearing from your colleagues and whether or not you're at all worried that this could impact its success in the House tomorrow. Well, I think President Trump is certainly raising his concerns about Facebook and uh, his concern that that uh, ByteDance would sell TikTok to Facebook and that Facebook would even become more powerful. I don't see any evidence for that happening. Uh, I think that, you know, TikTok is going to uh, be sold to whoever is the highest bidder. Uh, and I think there will be a number of entities who would be interested in purchasing TikTok. Uh, this legislation is very similar to what President Trump did in his last year of office, raising these national security concerns about TikTok. And uh, so I think it's very consistent with his policies. I understand, uh, uh, you know, he's not a fan of Facebook and their involvement in uh, previous elections. Uh, but I think this is legislation that will stand on its merits uh, based on the national security interests of our country. Then, Congressman, there's also the legal questions of this, just in terms of raising free speech issues. I'm curious how you're looking at that and whether or not you're making the argument that the national security threat, if that should hold a little bit more weight than some of these free speech issues. Well, yes, it, it's a great question. And clearly, free speech is something that's protected. And we are not in any way addressing uh, content with respect to TikTok. We are we are simply raising uh, the concerns about conduct. When you look at the Chinese Communist Party, who really has influence over TikTok, when you consider that they floated spy balloons over our country, they've hacked our databases for federal agencies like the Department of Commerce, they intimidate billions of people in their own country. Uh, they have done that through secret police stations here in this country. Uh, they have bribed officials. So what we're talking about is regulating uh, and protecting the American public from conduct based on the Chinese Communist Party and their influence with ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok. A, a forced sale of TikTok, there are only a few companies that could actually afford that price tag. To what extent would then regulators kick the tires on or just look at this deal and look at the potential suitors and say, OK, this actually goes up against deals that we would even consider letting through. What is the likelihood that a deal would get through, even if forced? Well, when you consider TikTok has uh, 177 million users in the United States, 
Uh, it's a very attractive, lucrative business. Um, you know, I think that's kind of a hypothetical situation where until they put it on the market, they don't know who would be interested in, in buying, but it certainly has been a successful thing. It has many of our children uh, addicted to it. Um, and we're simply trying to say, uh, we do not want a foreign adversary to have that control over the data, the information of American citizens. And uh, this is a national security issue considering the conduct of the Chinese Communist Party and their nefarious activities in the United States as well as around the world. What on the data front would need to change even if TikTok was sold to a U.S. party? Well, people would still be able to access their own data. That would be uh, a requirement of this legislation that, you know, people's videos or information that they have, they would still be able to access that. And so I think the users would not see any difference. What this simply does is it forces at the level of uh, the host for the app, uh, the people who sell the apps, uh, they would have to be mindful of not allowing one of these foreign entities of concern to, to have an app like this uh, active in the United States. And so uh, it really, from the user standpoint, I don't think they would see any difference. Congressman, just following up real quick where we started the conversation with Brad asking just what you or if you had been hearing from some of your constituents. I'm curious just how you're looking, how you and your colleagues on both sides of the aisle are looking at how this could ultimately impact the general election in November. Well, you know, we're not looking at it from a political uh, consideration. We're looking at it from a national security situation. And again, this is a recognition of our adversary, the Chinese Communist Party, and, and what they're doing to influence uh, uh, this country, what they're doing uh, to secure data and biometric data, all sorts of information that they could use for military purposes and for other reasons. And so, uh, I think that as the general public becomes more uh, aware of the threat from the Chinese Communist Party, they'll understand this as a necessary safeguard. Um, this is a strongly bipartisan bill that passed out of the Energy and Commerce Committee unanimously, and that rarely happens in Congress. And uh, it's supported by groups like the Heritage Action, as well as, uh, you know, leading Democrats. So. It, it's something that I think uh, is a consensus around the need to protect us from the Chinese Communist Party and, uh, and make sure that Americans' data is protected. And um, so I think you're going to see bipartisan support for this. And I think people uh, will not, as users, see a significant difference in their activity. All right. Well, we do know previously that it was companies like Walmart and Oracle that were interested in buying TikTok and a host of others that fell off earlier than that. So we'll see um, if this does move forward, which companies would then make themselves known. Congressman John Molnar, thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.